Social Paintball here today, and as you can see, you've got an array of i4 lenses in front of me, and here i got a black and gold uh, i4 mask. I'm going to be doing some interesting new videos. I have the support of Hustle Paintball going forward uh, with some of my crazy ideas here on videos that I think will be helpful to all of you as you're starting out playing paintball. This is especially for new players uh, looking to buy equipment or people interested in, in certain specific equipment. So, uh, But in general, we're going to be cramming a lot into the videos and not just doing one topic per video. I know that's uh, probably not as favorable as you're searching through topics, but really this is for our, our regular viewers and uh, sharing as much information we can as possible with them in an efficient manner. So Bob's going to my target with the uh, camera in his eye, if you all remember the video, Bob's going to be getting an i4 mask. Uh, he'll be wearing that and we'll be going through each of these lenses that Hustle's provided. We've got a, a, a rose lens, clear lens, a yellow lens, uh, amber lens, a um, smoke lens and a titanium mirror lens. Um, I also have the fade lens, but as I understand, the fade lens um, is um, not going to be available for much longer. Maybe they're changing something there, I'm not sure. Um, but the fade lens is pretty similar to the amber lens, so uh, maybe I'll take mine and put it on Bob as well and show you the view with mine as well. So those are all the lenses that I could come up with with their support. Blue is the hardest one to find. It's actually not very popular and out of stock pretty much everywhere. I tried to buy it through other sites and I couldn't find it. So that's what we're going to do as the first part of this segment is get ideas with me coming at Bob of what these lenses look like and hopefully it'll help you choose a lens and get more information without having to go out and try it. Some of us just don't have places nearby where we can do that. So hopefully this video will help. Uh, next what we're going to do is I'm going to have some different uh, barrel blocking devices. We're going to have kind of your standard um, barrel sock. And I've got some different kinds here. Uh, so a couple ones. Here's an NXT one. There's a flask one. So Hustle's provided um, as many different ones as we could come up with. I've got some of my own that you're going to see in the mix here. They're not right here in front of me. I even got some really unique ones like this... Uh, custom barrel sock uh, that an individual makes and I'll put his information in the link. Uh, Beastie at Tech PB makes these custom uh, barrel socks that are sewn into a little animal so I'll give you all the bird later. You know that'll be pretty funny. Put him on the end. And what we're gonna do is as I'm coming at Bob and shooting I'm gonna actually have a barrel sock on and I'm gonna do like a durability test. We're gonna see if we can blow through these. Uh, I've always been curious. I've had my gun go off a few times as a light touchy trigger and I've almost blown through a couple socks. Just curious as to whether dis different designs are more durable. We've got more of a uh, flimsy material here. Some of you know there's the cheaper versions of barrel socks and there's some that are reinforced more on the inside like this NXT one. Flask one's reinforced. Um, this is a custom one made with a... Uh, I can't quite feel in it here but it's wrong. Uh, I think that's a little bit reinforced. I think most of all barrel socks are reinforced a little bit, but the materials vary and the, the style vary. Also have a barrel plug. We'll shoot that out, see if we can hurt Bob with that. Get an idea if that's a uh, myth or not, whether or not those barrel plugs are really dangerous and will fly out at people or if they just kind of get lost because there's no way to carry them. Um, so as we're doing that, each segment with a different lens and different barrel sock, we're going to then... I'm going to have a mess on my hands. So we're going to go through some different types of swabs and squeegees. Uh, we've got pull-through squeegees. Um, there's one by uh, Allen Paintball Products. Here's, here's a swab by Exalt. Uh, here's a dye um, fuzzy stick. Uh, some of these are similar, so I'll only be taking and using uh, probably one of them. Uh, here's more of a, a hard... Uh, swab with the um, option to put a towel in the end. I think there's a T part for that. Um, and we've got uh, a V Pro kind of folding one here that is a hard stick that has the kind of circle at the end. There's advantages and disadvantages, little tips and tricks I'm going to throw in there. We're not going to dwell on this, but I did want to include um, essentially some little tips and tricks for the new players on um, items about uh, these, all these things that we carry with us advantages and disadvantages and my tips and what I do with this stuff, how I clean my lenses, how I, how I carry all this stuff for cleaning with me, what swabs I prefer, and things of that nature. So it's a lot to do in one video, but uh, I know we can do it. 
and uh, I hope you enjoy it. Leave some feedback. Um, one last item. Bob's going to be wearing a t-shirt. Hustle Paintball uh, donated here. It says Paintball sucks on it. <laughs> it sucks for Bob, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> and uh, I guess I'll do my first YouTube giveaway. I'm not uh, big into giveaways on, online here, but with this I'll make an exception with my kind of twisted sense of humor. And you can have Bob's shirt after I'm done with it, if you really want it. <laughs> I'll be throwing it in a box. If you want to win this, make sure you really want it, because I'm just going to throw it in a box and mail it to the winner. Uh, so I'll pick from a uh, drawing of who, whoever leaves a comment that they want Bob's uh, dirty shirt, and uh, we'll send it out to you. So um, that's, that's what we have. Let's go out and do it, and uh, I'll talk about it in a little bit. See you. Hi, Bob. He's got the titanium mirror on right now. 273. 274. 275. This is the flask. Um, barrel sock. Our first test subject, if you will. I don't think it really matters that it's their brand name, but just so you know, I think anything of this type with the reinforced uh, stitching in here, there's just a piece of... Uh, Nylon strapping across this direction uh, will fail just the same, so let's give it a shot, see how we do. There's one, two, four, five, six. Oh, we're getting messy now. <laughs> Flask barrel sock, pretty much a full pod. There you go, Bob, check it out. So as you can see, the flask through a full pod just about. I ran out of air. I'll go fill up here. And uh, no tears, a little bit of stress fracturing going on here. I don't know if you can see it. Starting to get stressed, and, uh, but did not fail through a whole pod point blank in front of Bob at uh, oh just under 280 feet per second so that worked pretty good worked as it should hey, Bob and I've got the NXC uh, barrel sock on now so Really, after that little one not failing, I don't think any barrel sock, any barrel sock I have today here is going to fail. I'll mess this one up, though, as promised. So, hey, Bob, how you doing, buddy? Oh, that just went flying. So after the first shot on uh, the ion, this sock actually just shot right off. Uh, so let me tighten it up. Good and tight here. Try to keep that from happening again. Okay, we got that good and tight. Okay, so tightened up the back strap there so that doesn't happen again. Hopefully we'll see if this uh, NXC one holds up. Uh, full hopper. Same chrono speeds. Hey Bob. How you doing buddy? Let's see. Dirty. Ugh, get me dirty, Bob. Quite the paint job, Bob. Oh! We're through. We are through. NXC1 broke. So, not even a, but just about a quarter of a pod. And we're through on Bob. Let me zoom in so you can see that. You can clearly see the shots on Bob. That would have really hurt Bob. Sorry, man. So I'll go ahead and take this off. I want you to see that there. Boom, right out the end. Right through the reinforced strap. Clean shot right out. So maybe it's the tension that did it, but with too little tension, the thing blew right off the end. Too much tension, or just anyways, boom, right through it. And this gun was just chronoed at 275 to 280. You saw it, so.
So there's Bob looking at me through rose-colored glasses. Gonna give you the bird, Bob. Say hello to my little friend, Bob. Let's hope it doesn't fail. Here we go, birdie. There's one, two. The bird is filling up. <laughs> the bird's ass is full. This is not pretty. Okay, the bird did not fail, but his ass did. He's got a full belly. <laughs> so, here's our bird. He, uh, he's shitting paintballs. <laughs> Nasty. That bird took a beating. One thing that I do is I've got around a, a strap on my pants. I've actually looped through a little dump pouch and I put it into my pocket. And this carries all my lens cleaning supplies and um, my clean rags until I'm ready to use them. So that's one thing I recommend because then if it falls out, it just swings. It just swings behind you, you don't lose it. So I just stuff that in my pocket. That works out good. There we go. Hey, Bob. Okay. So, here's Bob looking at me right in front again with the yellow lens on. We're gonna test out a barrel plug, see if we can shoot it at Bob. See how far it goes. I'll hold the chrono up, see if we can chrono it. I doubt it. I mean, if it goes above 140 feet per second out of the end of my barrel, I'll be surprised, but we'll do it. So let's do that next. We're gonna see uh, how fast or if or, you know, what it does shooting out of it. So let's uh, give it a shot. I'll get the chrono. It's gonna be paint behind it, so it might chrono the paint. You're at least gonna see it fly towards Bob here. Hey Bob, say cheese. Yeah, so it chronoed the paint. As you can see, it, uh, it flew past Bob there, I'd say about 30 feet. Um, if you had masks on, the velocity didn't look significant. Uh, but if you were up close and you didn't have a mask on, then that could be a problem. Uh, so that sucker did blow out. Best to go with the uh, socks. So there you have it on the um, barrel plug. I think I'm going to leave it there because I really don't want anybody to use it. Especially my kids. This time we've got Rat 4 barrel sock. It's kind of a small little thing. Got a nice strap on it. And uh, we're going to tension it up just like we did the NXC. Got a full pod here. Ready to go. Let's see what happens. Aim for his chest. And I'm just going to do one at a time. I'm not going to go too fast, but. Oh! First couple just blew the sock right off the end. So you can see, blew the sock right off the end, even with the tension. And guess what? Um, I'll show Bob. We've already got it broken through. Um, and already ripped on the other side. And that was a, that was a new uh, RAV4 sock. It had never been used. It's been in my basement, but it's never been uh, used actively at all. Never been shot before. We put like uh, maybe what? I'll have to count it back, but three, four shots maybe? And it's already blown through. Let me just finish it off. Yeah, after 10 shots, we're going right through it now. There's a clear hole. And uh, we'll show it to the big camera here. So that's the wrap for uh, barrel sock. Definitely uh, no go on that one. Um, and, you know, to be fair, it was tight like the NXE. It failed. I'm going to put the flash back on. See if I can get it to fail with the strap tent. So we've already shot this one up. I'm putting that nasty thing back on my barrel. Okay, I'm going to see if I can get this one to... You know, make sure this is really tight like the other ones. Just to be fair. So that's really tight. Okay. It's on there tight. See if we can get it to fail. Two shots. Two shots. So, moral of that story. 
don't have that strap be tight at all. But you gotta have it tight a little bit, or else, you know, it's just gonna fly off after the first shot. I don't know what to say after this. Uh, this is really interesting. This might require more, uh, you know, looking into. But, you know, this one had already taken a pounding. It sat there for a while, but as soon as I tighten that up, put a couple shots through, boom, right through. Um, so that tension on the end against the barrel, pulling that taut, it's not good. So I would say you want this tight, but not too tight. Um, Bird did the best. <laughs> Had the tight strap, <laughs> filled his belly. So uh, that's all I got for, for breaking barrel socks. That's three I've broken. So uh, let's look at the rest of Bob's lenses. So here's me standing right in front of Bob. Her uh, I4 lens. It's probably uh, a lot, a little darker than that yellow. I want to get up pretty close so you can see me. Contour isn't that great uh, when you get far away there. It doesn't zoom or anything. So, I really don't know what you're seeing yet. I'm hoping this works. Sun's going behind the clouds there. We got a hurricane coming. I want you to see a stream of paint going by Bob. So, uh, let's do it. Hey, Bob. Gotta be careful. Don't want to shoot Bob's lens. <laughs> Back up a little bit. Hey, Bob. Coming right by you. I think I'm getting better at the trigger. Myra's going to be proud of me. A little. Shouldn't speak too soon. Yeah, that's really tinted. I'll probably zoom in with the camera now so you can just see the look of this though, because that's the cool part about this lens. The uh, smoke lens looks pretty badass. So here's Bob with the smoke lens on. And I know the big camera's gonna make me look closer, but I'm actually uh, about, oh, 20 feet, 20 feet back from Bob. So let's take a look at this. Here you go, Bob. There you go. Smoke lens. Yeah, I know it's stupid, but I want to know if shooting point blank if I can break this lens. Okay, so we're going to chrono the gun again, load it up, putting this on Bob. Sorry about the I-4, it's going to take some paint. But I want to see if I can break this and then see how, how scratched up it is later. I'll do another close-up later so you can see it after, after what I do to it here. I'm going to do bad things to it for you. 285, 280, 283. There's Bob, it's coming at him. Ready, Bob? See if we can finish him off. I'm going up closer. 10 feet or so. Come on, break. About five feet, five feet, About three feet, About two feet. And I'm out of paint. No problem, my paint's right here. Not sure what you're seeing at this point. There's my gun, I think you're seeing it. I'm about two feet away, I'm just trying to get this fucker to break. Break. Come on. Okay, we're gonna go right on it. Right on it. 
right on his lens. Okay, I'm right on it. I'm gonna back up a little, but the gun's gonna be right on it. Need more paint. Another full hopper here. I'm out of air. Lens did not fail. Camera might have stopped working, I'm not sure, but if not, you at least got this one camera view. Let's go back inside. I got a bunch of stuff to clean up, including myself. I've got two categories. We've got stick devices and we've got um, flexible squeegee devices. And the flexible devices, um, they're great because they store so well. You can cram them up into a little ball, put them in a pocket, uh, um, in a pouch, or you can attach them end to end and wear them um, like a necklace around your neck. Readily available, just pull it and quick, quickly accessible. They do a great job of cleaning the flexible devices. Uh, some of them, like the Sound Paintball one, has a, a little cloth on the end that comes through um, last thing and, and really puts a nice finish on. Uh, these most standard ones, you basically just pull them through and all the paint comes out and then you find yourself swinging these around or trying to wipe them off. Uh, that's one disadvantage of this uh, squeegees is that the paint is just loose on the device itself and it's running off of it uh, as opposed to a lot of the stick devices have swabs that hold the paint as well as um, clean. So uh, that can be good, it can be bad. I think in general you probably on a first uh, pass will get a better clean um, clean barrel with a flexible device, uh, but the swab devices have other advantages. You're able to push out the paintball um, that's jammed in the barrel. Quite often you'll get a balls that are jammed in here, maybe you're underboring, maybe um, you just got a bunch of them that got stacked in there and they're stuck in there. Um, so having a stick device to push them through is necessary. Um, so even if you have a flexible one along with you, you're going to be uh, screwed if you don't have some sort of stick device as well. So I recommend the stick devices. Two swabs is, is what I do. One for the first uh, pass to get the paint off. And then I have another pocket. I'll take out a swab that's my um, second pass swab and I've treated it with uh, just a little bit of silicone lubricant on the pads. And so when I put that one through, it leaves a nice mirror finish on um, with the silicone that's nice and slick. So. That's what I personally do, is I go with the swabs. I don't even bother with these, uh, but I know a lot of people prefer these, and I wanted you to see some different, some different takes on it. Make sure your swab or your, or your squeegee is longer than the barrel you're using. So it's really easy to take one of these off, and you've never thought about it. You go ahead, and you're in the game. You stick it in there. There you go. Your barrel is now really uh, plugged. <laughs> Big freaking mess, but a whole lot of fun. And that's what paintball should be, fun. So, conclusions. Well, first of all, um, if you've got a barrel sock, do not tighten up the back plug so that this is purely taut. Because as we saw, if this is taut and very tight, that barrel's pressing right up against the end and fitting tight and making a nice uh, tight film for a ball to slam into and break through. I say go with the bird. Uh, call up Beastie. Get yourself a uh, custom barrel sock with that extra layer of Beanie Baby uh, protection. I think it works. Um, that's just what it was. I actually expected to blow through that one first. Um, I was really surprised the NXT one was the first one to go. In terms of swabs, I recommend actually what I use and what I recommend are bomb swabs. Um, you go to bombswabs.com. You can get a little custom labels for them. I don't think that's really worth it. But, um, and the sticks are wooden, but the swabs are just really great. They're really nice. Um, bushiest ones I've seen. Um, the Exalt one would be great as well. Uh, Exalt, I don't know, I just find that they, every product that I use of theirs that I review, I really love it. I think they, uh, they really know paintball and they know how to put something together for paintball. I wouldn't go with squeegees at all. Stick with the swabs. I told you I did with two of them, so that's how I'd go with that. And um, in terms of the i4 lenses, I, I hope the footage on Bob comes out. I haven't reviewed it yet. And um, the i4s really took a pounding there at the end and did not break, uh, even point blank. I scratched the shit out of them, but uh, no detectable um, cracks. There's pock marks on the lenses themselves, which 
Um, I always get those marks when I get hit um, with paint in the face. Uh, you'll see a little, you know, some little uh, spread pattern on the lenses. So they held up really, really well. I'm surprised. I really let them have it. A feeling inside now there. And I don't know how this happened, but let's see if you can see it. I'm going to do my best. Right where my finger is. Let's see if I can use the light there. There's actually a dent on the interior lens, not the exterior. So right behind where all those pock marks are, on the inside, there's actually a dent. And it bent in. It's good to know that it could take that kind of damage. Uh, that's not to say every lens is going to perform that way, or you should even try this or count on it. No, definitely do not count on it. Um, but I was just curious to see how that would stand up. So. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. It, uh, it really made a mess out of me. Uh, it was a lot of work, a lot of running around. I'm a one-man gang, so uh, I don't know if I'll take on something as epic as this many parts at once again, but it was definitely fun to try it out and uh, interested to hear all your feedback. So take care. the tongue, make everybody cheer, breathe the moon, inhale the light year, who's the goons that's ready to fight beers, in the booth.